In this video, we're going to be showing real estate agents how you can use AI through ChatGPT in order to help you go find your next listing. We often hear how AI and tools like ChatGPT or others are going to help us run better, more efficient businesses. And this is something that you can actually do today right now with ChatGPT. Now, it's something that this isn't a very polished, put together product. It's essentially a tool that you're going to be building through this video within chat GPT. So it's a little bit clunky. It's definitely in a beta status, but if you're willing to kind of work through that, you, we can actually see right now how we can actually go find those next motivated sellers that you can go get in front of. So the couple of different things that you're going to need to get started is first, you'll need a chat GPT plus account, at least at the time of this recording that could change in the future. But as of right now, you need the plus account, which has a small monthly fee so that we can use both chat GPT-4 and their new advanced data analytics tab, which is going to allow us to upload files like CSVs. So the other thing that you're going to need are two different CSVs, and you can see I have those here, where in this one, I've exported five years of our MLS data. So this is all the actives, pending, sold, withdrawns, expireds, canceled, all the data for the last five years exported into one file. And so then this way, we basically have a snapshot in time to say, okay, of everything in the last five years that is sold, we can start whittling down using this file here from the title company to help identify which sellers are kind of the hottest, the next hottest listings. And so we can go get in front of them. The title data, I've only done it for one zip code here in order to kind of keep the data a little bit smaller, but basically, it's every single family condo and town home within one zip code and all the data that the title company has. So then we have the characteristics of every single home in that zip code. So what we're going to do to get started is once you're in chat GPT, you need to go into the settings and turn on this advanced data analysis tab right here. This is what's going to unlock the ability. You can see it right here where we can upload files. I forget where it says that work with file uploads, right? So we're going to be uploading those two different files and then be able to talk to chat GPT in kind of real human form and figure out how do we start filtering down the data to go from that title data is about 35,000 people. And we're going to whittle it down to under 200 homeowners that we can go talk to right now and show them why it's the perfect time for them specifically to sell their home. So the other thing you're going to do is once you go into chat GPT four at the top here, you're going to click on this advanced data analysis tab, and then that's where we can get started. Now I've already loaded up everything into a tab because if you have ever done a chat GPT chat before, you know, things can get a little wonky. So I preloaded it instead of trying to do this live. So I will include this piece right here in a document and a link down below. And basically what we're going to do is we're, we always start out by telling chat GPT kind of who we are, what we're going to be looking for, and then clarifying some terms, especially because I'm out here in the Bay area in California, and we might use very different terminology than somebody in the Midwest or the East coast or, uh, states that use title companies versus states that use lawyers to do their final sales, uh, sale transactions. And so what we need to do is we need to kind of teach chat GPT the few different things of how we define things. So I say, if I say sales or sales, I mean those with a status of sold, right? Little things. If I say listings or transactions, I mean any of the rows, regardless of their column status, right? And so it's just doing some basic things. And again, I'll include a link down below where you can take that, modify it for yourself in your local area so that the data kind of or so that chat GPT can understand the data better. Now, one of the great things about this is when I've uploaded these two documents to chat GPT, I haven't had to do much formatting to them, right? Because it'll actually be able to start delineate for me. This one might say bedrooms, but this one says beds and it'll start to figure out, okay, those are probably the same column. Whereas before, if I ever tried to do this analysis on my own using just Excel or Google sheets, I would actually have to clean up the data and line it up, but I no longer have to do that. We'll let the robots figure that out for us. So once we get those uploaded, it starts to just give us a brief overview of seeing exactly what it sees in there. And then it asks what analysis that we're looking for. So 
the thing that I'm going to be looking for is I want to know which homes were most in demand based off of the sales data from the MLS in 95010. So it's a specific zip code that I want to work with here in our county, right? So I said, what are the characteristics of the most popular homes sold? And so it starts to figure out, okay, if something's popular or in demand, it means that it may have sold for a higher sales price. It may have sold faster. It may, the percent of the asking price over the original list price, that might be higher than the median or the average. And then if it received a higher number of offers, right? So not all MLSs are going to have this data. And in our MLS, not every row has that data. However, when it is available, see, it even notices that it's not always there. But if it's available, it's going to use that to calculate. And I like how it does this. It'll even say, does this approach sound good? It's just like I'm talking to another person. Say, yes, it does. So it starts to break it down and say, okay, well, of the homes that sold the quickest or the highest prices, this is what they kind of look like. And now I'm going to go through and say, you know, we're going to start whittling that down a little bit and say, okay, of the homes sold, what were the characteristics of the homes? Like, I don't necessarily care about the sales data. I want to know what are the specific homes that sold so that then we can go find the same types of homes and tell those sellers or homeowners, hey, your home is actually in high demand, right? So it starts to break it down. You can see it kind of argues with itself for a little bit. It takes a minute to go through this. This is what good reason why I didn't do it live. It kind of has to argue for a minute, starts to figure it out. I ask for a little bit clarification. I can say, ignore the lot size. I don't care about the number of half baths because it's also telling me, uh, so for full baths, I'm fine with this. I don't need two bedrooms and half baths or two bathrooms and half baths. I just want half or uh, full baths and rounded to the nearest half is fine. And so it says, okay, here are the updated characteristics of home sold in 95010. It's median of two bedrooms, two bathrooms. What I really like here, it says the median is 1,088 square feet, but the average is 1,200 square feet, and it's about 47 years old, the home is, right? So then I can say, okay, now create a CSV, so I want it in a CSV form, from the title data set, so saying from the title company, of the homes that most closely relate to this criteria, give or take, and have not sold in the last five years, right? Because if it only sold in the last year or two, it's just someone that's not likely to sell all that quickly, and we need to narrow this list down as much as possible. So I say last five years. And so you can see it starts going through it again. Uh, it says we're going to use a range to capture this. I like this note as well. Please note that using the exact averages may result in a very narrow selection. So I'll use a range. Fantastic. Exactly. I don't want exactly homes that are one, two, three, four square feet. I want, you know, a range of it. So it starts to figure it out and it creates a, a filtered data set here. All I have to do is click download and boom, there it is. So then once I open that up here, it's already open, so I can't, it's now narrowed this down to subtract the top row, 171 homes. So out of the, and I have their addresses, I have their APNs, I have the data on their homes. I have homeowner data over here, but I have removed that just for YouTube pur purposes, right? And say, so now I've gone from the 30 to 35,000 homes in the zip code down to just 171 homes. So now I can take that list of 171 homes and start marketing directly to them. Maybe I upload that list to Facebook and create a custom audience, although that audience is going to be probably too small for Facebook purposes. But maybe I can create a mailing list around those people, or maybe we can just start going and knocking on their doors and saying, look, your home is in extremely high demand. And we can show them we have all the work right here where we can actually show exactly why we know their home is in high demand. If you've considered selling your home in the next year, we need to talk, right? And so it's basically just narrowing it down. So I don't need to go talk to 35,000 people. I now only have to talk to 171. And hopefully those people are now the most, uh, we know that if they're above five years of home ownership, that they're probably a little bit closer to that sales point. And then we also know that if we can tell them your home is in high demand, that's something that other agents aren't telling them. They're telling them all homes are in high demand because we're in low inventory situation right now. But if I can say, no, 
we used AI, we used chat GPT, I would straight up tell them, we use chat GPT to identify a list of homeowners that are most in demand compared to the other homes on the market, and you're one of them, that might pique somebody's interest. Anyway, so like I said, this is a very rudimentary way of using it to start now. This is only going to get better. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, this is the worst it's ever going to be. It's only going to get better from here. Let me know how does it work for you. Let me know in the comments how else you might use this because we can now go through and just start asking it questions. Um, we can ask other questions like ask it to create charts for us that show what are the brackets of the most in-demand homes. We can say, uh, we can even, because it's MLS data, we can ask it questions about agents. You can start to understand which agents control a specific market. We can even ask it which markets are most ripe for disruption if we can teach it what that means, meaning that like no agent has more than maybe a 2% market share in that zip code, right? So there's a lot of stuff we can do here. Let the, Hopefully this is a video that just kind of gets those juices flowing about how you might do it. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'd love to hear how you're using it going forward.